Episode 165 of Weighing In with Travis Hartman. I am B-Money, the producer. That over there is the talent, Travis Hartman, a.k.a. Weekend Trav. Canelo Alvarez taking on Edgar Berlanga this Saturday, September 14th. T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. You can catch that on Prime Video, Pay-Per-View, or DAZN Pay-Per-View. Ooh, for a cold, crisp 89.95 Weekend Trav. Why are we having this fight? Canelo Alvarez, Edgar Berlanga. It's the cultural boxing mega fight and meaning it's Mexico versus Puerto Rico. There. That's why. Okay, let's be honest. Does anybody really think that Berlanga has earned this shot to fight a Canelo? No, he has not. He is 20, undefeated. 22 and 0. 16 yeah, exactly. knockouts. He's only, undefeated. Only, only one coming in in his last six. Yeah, he, he's undefeated. He's a very good fighter. Okay, I don't want to talk too much smack on him because I think he's good. He's undefeated. Okay, he is. There's a lot of guys that are undefeated we can try I know. Like this. Because, like I said, it's the Puerto Rico versus Mexican. And it's and you know what September is. September is the Mexican Independence Day. So that's why September is a big deal because Canelo fights in May and September. I always say this Cinco de Mayo weekend, September, big fights. It's Mexican Independence Day weekend or or um, however you say that. I apologize if I got it wrong for the, the Mexicans listening to our podcast. Apology but... accepted. On behalf of all my people, <laughs> I accept that po- apology. A quarter of my quarter of are, myself. Are you like one fourth quarter. like Filipino? Yeah, I'm a quarter Filipino. So I, I like I, I, I lean towards a Manny Pacquiao. And then a quarter of me lean towards a Canelo Alvarez. And then half of me is just white. <laughs> okay. Well, either way, this fight, it's happening. So I can't really talk any more smack on it. Um, it is a very expensive price tag, but I think Canelo wins. I think Canelo wins in a very dominant fashion. I think Canelo knocks him out in the ninth or 10th round. Well, I'll tell you this. Edgar Belenga comes in as the underdog, plus 800 underdog, okay? And we're looking to the over-under on rounds eight and a half. So I think you're right on the money there, Weekend Trav. Yeah. Uh, looking at what Vegas is looking at. Canelo comes in as the uh, favorite, minus 1,500. Minus 1,500. You're going to put 1,500 bucks down to win 100 bucks. Good. I might, I might lay some sucker bets on every single round from round one to 10. Maybe it could be worth it. It's going to do better than my NFL bets did all weekend. We won't get into that on this episode, but um, we can try. I think what's more intriguing about this, and we'll, we'll circle back to the main event in a moment, but the rest of the card actually looks pretty appealing. Maybe not $90 appealing, uh, but pretty appealing nonetheless. What do you have to say about, let's start, let's just go from, uh, from you know, co-main event down. And so we're going to start with one, Danny Chompers Garcia. <laughs> I, I make um, fun because it looks like he has giant cap teeth, which I think he does. Yes. Uh, Danny um, Garcia uh, taking on Lara here for a belt, it looks like. Huge fight, dude. Arizona Lara and Danny Garcia are firm, former world champions, former world title contenders, all of that. like, And they're fighting each other on the undercard. It's a phenomenal fight, B-Money. So do I think it's worth it? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to watch, but is it going to be worth it? The undercard could be. This actually, to be fair, could be one of the better undercards that we've seen um, in a really long time on a Canelo fight. Yeah, Canelo, so I'll tell you. Canelo's the seller, right? He don't need an undercard, but they've stacked an undercard actually, I think, this time. Well, it's interesting. So the Canelo, so Berlanga and uh, and Canelo, that's going to be for uh, Canelo's undisputed super middleweight championship, which is Edgar Berlanga, by the way, his first title fight. Actually, even more interesting stat here, we can Trev. I don't know if you knew this. Edgar Berlanga's first pay-per-view. Yes, I do believe that. It's crazy, isn't it? We're yeah. talking all this in his first pay-per-view. He's main event going against Canelo. But let's go back to Danny Garcia. So this is going to be for Lara's WBA super middleweight title. Okay, so we got another title fight. Uh, that should be a pretty interesting one. What do you think about that fight? I mean, it's got to be like some interim belt because Canelo has all the belts at super middleweight. So it's got to be like an interim. They have all these interim and all this the alpha, other It's the alphabet crazy soup, belts, man. It's the WBA but- super middleweight title. I, th- I think it's I think it's interesting, man, because this could be setting up another possible opportunity for Canelo to fight the winner of one of these guys. Canelo's already fought Lara, so yeah. maybe he's thinking that Garcia is going to beat Lara and he could fight Garcia. Garcia 
would be more of a formidable opponent for Canelo than Berlanga, if I'm being honest. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He earned that right more than a Berlanga has. Because Danny Garcia has won a world title. Danny Garcia has fought some of the best out there, knocked out uh, Amir Khan. He's he's done a lot. Yep. Uh, he's had a lot of big fights, not just Amir Khan. He's fought everybody. Season, um, but yep. he's a very seasoned vet. He's a very he's an ex world champion. So and maybe possibly a current world champion after this now, fight. Who knows? WBA. But it's a good co main event. Yep. So. Uh, it, yes, it is. And Danny Garcia has done a good job at promoting this event as well. You see him, he's been on all, I mean, if you take a look at, you follow any boxing on social media, Danny Garcia has been showing up a lot. Uh, yeah. at least I've noticed this. So, it, you know, frankly, I didn't even know he was on this thing until I looked at the fights. I'm like, Oh, well, that makes a lot of sense. That's why he's been, you know, running his, his chompers. Uh, yeah. And usually all this. Canelo doesn't have to put anybody big on the undercard because oh. he's the seller and he literally can sell all by himself and put it could put amateur fights undercard and the fight would still sell. But well, instead, what does he do, Weekend Trav? We talked to Andy Garcia, but let's talk about the the fight right before that. Caleb Plant. Yeah. Trevor McCombie, which I think is going to be an interesting fight, by the way. 12 rounds it's going to be for the, very interesting. 12 rounds for the vacant WBA interim super middleweight title. So get that. We got, there you go. We got Lara and Garcia for the WBA super middleweight title. And then we got Caleb Plant and Trevor McCombie for the vacant WBA interim super middleweight title. What is that? Listen, it, this, this is another one of those things where it's like... What? For what, oh. like, what's your title's pronouns, B Money? It's the same initials, <laughs> WBA, and it's super. It I told you both. The, the WBA has like an interim. They have like a super whatever. There's, it's, it's insane. They just and, mailed me a cruiserweight fight, belt. But the fight, <laughs> the fight is pretty cool. You know why it's pretty cool? Because even though. Berlanga and Caleb Plant are fighting different opponents. Berlanga and Caleb Plant have been going back oh, and yeah. forth. I would love to see Berlanga get knocked out by by Canelo, and yep. then his next fight should be with Caleb Plant right here in Orlando, Florida, yep. at the Crib Royale. I would love to see Berlanga Caleb Plant fight where we could watch that fight. But I digress because Caleb Plant is fighting. Uh, Trevor McCombie, who, by the way, has had multiple different failed drug tests in like 2016 that nobody's talking about. I just saw a Caleb Plant post about it, and he's not wrong. So that's kind of a little weird. But I think this K Caleb Plant versus McCombie fight is going to be a better fight than most people think. I think so, too. I don't think it's going to be a blowout from um, from from um, Caleb Plant. It's going to be a good fight. Yeah, yeah, that's this is going to be a barn burner, I think. Um, they were supposed to fight. It's funny you mentioned Orlando. They were supposed to fight in August here in Orlando. Uh, I don't know if that was going to be Kareeb or if that was going to be some other. It was. Uh, it venue. was. Okay. Um, so um, that is an interesting fight, folks. Circle that one. That one potentially has fight of the night written all over it. Okay, you're hearing it from B Money first. Caleb Plant, Trevor McCumbie, twelve rounds. Vacant WBA blah 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 title. Um, Stephen Fulton taking on Carlos Castro. Stephen Fulton, so, uh, I want to say fresh off the heels of a loss against uh Noya in a way because he has since fought another. Uh, but he did get his bell rung and he got knocked out by in a way, which everyone his does. First ever loss, yeah, first ever loss. But he's back in action, uh, taking on Carlos Castro 10 rounds, featherweights, the quick boys. What do you think? Another good fight, dude. An undercard yep. fight for a main event of Canelo Alvarez, I think is a solid one. Where we're having high level guys on the undercard be money. How often I like do it. we see that? You know what? You know how often we do see that is the Saudi Arabia guy, Turkish Al Sheikh, uh -huh. he stacked his undercard in the last one. Um, so I think he's making everybody now make it all these pay-per-views step up and actually put quality fights leading up to the main event. So I give some of this credit to Turkish al -Ashik, but also what people don't realize, B-Money, is Canelo Alvarez and their pay-per-view card is going up against the UFC at the Sphere in Las Vegas. Yep. So we're going to have to have a stacked card, not just a Canelo, because people do watch the UFC. Usually we can pull from the UFC fans, but now the hardcore UFC fans, they're only going to watch their UFC fight live. Yeah. We usually do pull from them. UFC guys kind of go back and forth. They like boxing as well, but not when there's a same night in the same city. 
I'm going to tell you what, though. I'm t I'm sorry, and and listen, I I love combat sports. I, MMA is great, and it has it has definitely kind of I want to say taken over Las Vegas, but it's a prime draw in Las Vegas for sporting events. Las Vegas is still a boxing town, and Canelo is still the top name when it comes to boxing. So trying to go head to head, I don't care if Canelo's fighting this a, a taxi driver, he's gonna get butts in the seats no matter what now they're going to try to compare dollar for dollar on the gate and all this other horse shit that's not going to matter all what matters is that last i checked i heard through my grapevine that the sphere was having some difficulty getting all those tickets sold that's what i heard of course, I could, of course I, you know it's, i hear things and now it will be a sellout quote unquote okay so dana white don't come after me you don't give blocked, a lot of tickets away you've already blocked weekend Trav on <laughs> x twitter yes you don't yes. need to you don't need to block Gulfstream financial all one word on twitter or x um i don't really go on there ever uh, but so anyways <laughs> i love how you snuck that in there yeah uh, you know um anyway so this is going to be pretty stacked what I will say, if you're going to spend eighty nine ninety five weekend trap, if you're going to watch this from the comfort of your own home, you better turn it on at 8 p.m. when it starts, Eastern Standard Time. You want to know why? Tell me why. Your boy, Roly Romero, is opening this sucker up. He's taking on someone named Manuel Jaimes, 10 rounds, junior welterweights. Roly Romero, or however I make fun of his one. He is back. He's back in action. Your boy, he needs Roy to be Romero. After that terrible performance against uh who was the guy? Bar the, the 40 year old. Or he looked 40 or he was 40, actually. That last yeah. fight he kind of got embarrassed. Ishmael, um, Ishmael something, I believe his name. Bar. It was gosh dang, I can't wait for that. Dude that won. Name. That dude won. Yes. So he uh, he's coming off of that. So he needs to do something pretty impressive to um kind of regain his oh yeah. I don't know status. I don't even know if he had status to be fair, but he it's creates, his, Romero, he creates and, his own clout. So give it to him. He's created his own clout in the social media world and just kind of forced his name into conversations with some of these other people we talk about in the welterweight up and down, you know, a few pounds space, but Rolly Romero back in action. He is opening up this card 8 PM this Saturday, September 14th, T-Mobile Arena, Las Vegas, Nevada, Prime Video Pay-Per-View or DAZN Pay-Per-View. Man, I think I just hyped myself into wanting to see this thing. We can try. You're going to watch it now. You know you're going to watch it. <clears throat> Ishmael Bar Bar Barroso. Barroso. I don't know. But it was a terrible fight. And then he lost to Isaac Cruz by TKO in the eighth round, if you remember. That was Roller's last fight, which oh. I won money on because I thought that Cruz would do that. Um, but... So he's back. He's fighting a 16-1-1 guy. Hopefully he does good. Who knows? We'll see. I think it's worth the watch. You have Rolly Romero, Stephen Fulton. Um, Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant. Danny Garcia. Arizlandi Lara. Obviously Canelo Alvarez and Barlanga. I think it's a good fight, man. Top from bo top to bottom on the pay-per-view portion. I think it's worth, it's worth, it's interesting enough that I think enough people will buy that. Once again, take a look at that Caleb Plant, Trevor McCombie fight. And it's interesting right now, heavy favorite Caleb Plant, heavy favorite, the Canelo type favorite, minus 1500 with McCombie Oof. plus 750. Uh, on Hard Rock Bets, if you have access to that, folks, depending on when you're listening, there's no other like rounds or anything right now. All I'm seeing is just straight winner on that one. So that could be an interesting flyer there. Plus 750. Good Lord. Uh, imagine if McCumbie pulls off that upset. Um, uh, I don't so, want him to because that would ruin. I want to see Caleb Plant and Berlanga. Well, you could still see that two losers fighting one another. Uh, but I'll just give you the, for instance, you put five bucks on a McCumbie, you're going to walk away with 4250 weekend Trav. And if you're like me, you might have some profit boosts available, according to this app right now as I'm looking. <laughs> so we'll see. Here I don't in know Florida, we're do allowed it. to bet using the Hard Rock app. Uh, what I like to say is you're allowed to lose money uh, using the Hard Rock Bets app because I only make money on the WNBA action. I lose money everywhere else. <laughs> Unless you bet on the Cowboys like I did last weekend. You're a homer. underdogs. What I'm going to do when I this, don't normally bet on the Cowboys. When this that episode, one I thought they could win. When this episode posts, I'm going to put up my diagram of where the Cowboy fans are for the season. <laughs> it's game one that is over. Week one over. That does not know because you're right. That that's not me as a fan. That never has been. Yeah, well, we beat the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, I'm happy you, that we. I'm happy that we won, but 
Don't underestimate the Cleveland Browns, by the way. You can't see yeah, it. I you know it. it. So you right said it now, to me every year. Right now, we just passed the blo- the box that says season starts, and then someone circled, we are here. Start season looking good, which they did. They look great. Uh, you guys just overpaid Dak Prescott, uh, so he's got to live up to that at least for one or two weeks. Um, <laughs> the defense looked fairly good, too. Very, very good. But also, you're playing the Browns, the Brownies. So... Listen, you know. I, I hate that I'm having to do this, but the Browns do suck normally, right? They won 11 games last year, and their defense was the number one in the league. Did you know that? I yeah, didn't even how many, know that. How many of those games did Deshaun Watson play? He went eight and four with them. He didn't He didn't play the whole season. He was hurt like half the season. I know, but he went eight and four with them. Not bad. Out of the 11 wins they got, he got eight of them. But it doesn't uh, matter. I don't – I'm not – Pushing up the Cowboys. That's the real I'm money just man happy. right there. That's the guaranteed money man. I'm just happy I'm not getting tagged in memes all freaking week. That's it. I'm just That's happy that the world. Cowboys That's are not tagging world. me. All the friends, you know, we don't have friends. We got shit talkers on both yeah. sides. And I got nobody. I don't care. <laughs> I got nobody. I'm alone in the football season. And it, 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 everyone comes out of the woodwork. Not only does my college team blow, Florida State sucks this year. Great. Two weeks in, we play week zero and play, played week one. We got torched. We suck. Now, my starting quarterback for the Packers goes down in the final six seconds as he's valiantly trying to win this game. And he might be out for six weeks plus. They're not saying he has his MCL sprain. Hopefully, that's it. Hopefully, they rest him appropriately. Hopefully, some a random backup Malik Willis does some does some dirty on the Colts this weekend and at least gets us to five hundred. But we go down to the Eagles, which they're pretty good, by the way. Uh, be warned, <laughs> they're not bad. Be warned, they got a lot of weapons. Um, uh, so be warned about that weekend, Trav, as you guys play them twice. Anyways, back to boxing. Division. Back to boxing. Good card. If you're so inclined and flush with cash because you bet on the Cowboys this past weekend and won $90, go ahead and buy this pay-per-view. I suggest Prime Video pay-per-view because it's easier than figuring out the DAZN pay-per-view. And Plus, Eddie Hearn sucks, so we don't want to give him any dollars, right? I mean, I don't disagree. Okay, well, I'm just... Not completely, but... You know, he's, he's got to promote the way he promotes. Uh, anyways, Weekend Trap. Let's shift gears because you were at an event here in Orlando just a few days ago. Uh, our our friends there with, with Box Lab, they put on another great show, and this was on a Friday. This was this past Friday weekend, Trav, once again at the Carib Royale. Why don't you give us a, a little rundown and your take on it? I was not there because I was watching my lowly Packers go down <laughs> uh, to the Eagles in Brazil. Uh, so why don't, you, why don't you give a rundown here on that event? Dude, it was another great event. Thanks to Amari and Eric with Box Lab Promotions hooking us up. They always take care of us. We always support. We always love going, getting the best tickets, as you know that. The main event was good, man. Kevin Brown is 6-0. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's good. And he fought um, Bowza. John Bowza, I think was the guy's name. 18-1 at the time. He's 18-2 now because he lost. But it was an amazing fight. Kevin Brown dropped him actually in the second round, which was a little, little shocking to me because Kevin Brown usually is a very solid boxer. But he sat down and put this guy on his butt. So that was a good fight. Uh, the, the card top to bottom was very good. There was actually two women's fights. One of the women's fights stands out. Brie Holloway was her name. Is that Bam she Bam? She came out. Yes. She's like 6 or 7 and 0 from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And just her walkout. Dude, smoke. did you see the video too? Like it was nope. awesome. Like her walkout, I got it on our on our page. I recorded it. She like sang a song as she was walking out. The girls got rhythm. But then I was like, oh, you know what? This is good, but... Let me see how good she is. Bro, she's really good. There you go. I want to say this about women's boxing right now. I have to say this, but the more women's boxing that I've gotten to watch live now, mm-hmm. they're getting better, B Money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like they're, we're, I think we're in the middle of this right now. We're in the middle of seeing live right in front of our faces the evolution of women's boxing because some of these women, B Money, it's the knock on women's boxing is kind of like basketball, right? It's they don't, they're, they're not powerful. They don't dunk and they don't get all the exciting stuff. Pro boxing is they don't have the knockouts like the men do, blah, blah. Right. But dude, some of these women now, three Holloway, super lighter weight girl, too. I don't know what her weight class was, but it was super lightweight, like 130 probably. But she was smashing this girl a little bit, like some pop on her punch. She didn't knock her out, but I'm like hearing these punches live now. I'm like, these girls are getting some pop on their punches. I'm seeing the changing right before my very eyes, how they used to be really powder puff. Like, and now I'm like, 
when they hit, I'm like, oh, I kind of felt it a little bit. So like yeah. we're seeing the evolution of women's it's boxing good, right cause now. Because you're, you're getting the you're getting women uh, that are going through proper training from from little girls. On up. Of, yeah. We've talked about this. Uh, you know, in our early days, we talked about women's sports and women's boxing. We've always been an advocate for, uh, you know, uh, keep, keeping those, you know, keeping women's sports going. But yes, you get the female <laughs> boxers with proper training. What? Because <laughs> you, you know I'm about to tee up a joke. I know. I, I you know. know it's coming. You I know. know. It's coming. So you have the women fighters who are really putting the time in and you're starting to see that perform in the ring and you're starting to see the talent finally really start to flourish and then on top of that you have the men becoming women that are also able to compete and win medals and so the, it's really just a flourishing of women's boxing because you have the natural women you know starting to really learn the craft and be performers and athletes and then you have the men that become the women and it's just everyone the the tides raise all boats is what i say <laughs> Tides oh, raise all boats. Gracious. Yeah, Bing. something like that. Yeah, something like that. So nice. the night was good. good. Friday night at Box Lab Promotions at Crib Royale on the zone. The fights were good, man. Top to bottom. They were very good. Co-main event, the main event, the girls' fights. Um, it was enjoyable. Glad we went. They've continued to bring high level quality boxing. I believe that um Kevin Brown now is ranked in the top five in the world now. I think he'll get a world title shot in the next year. I think actually it's going to be closer to like eight to 10 months in my opinion. So it, we're talking about next year. I think Kevin Brown will fight for a 140 pound WBA world title by one of them. I want to say next summer, dude. Yeah. Ho hopefully the actual one. One of the real ones. One of the yes. real WBA ones. Yes. But I think they will for sure. Cause it was, he's a quality fighter. Yes, he and is. He, he definitely and is. He's six and zero, oh, and they're moving him this fast already. He's only six. And I remember watching him as like pro debut. He fought like a ten rounder, I think, and we were there for that. Um, but he's they're moving him good. I think he's going to fight for a world title. In my opinion, eight to ten months, probably next summer sometime. I hope it's in Orlando so we can come watch it at, at the Crib Royale. Um, but the Zone Box Lab, most valuable promotions. Jake Paul's promotion companies, who was here too. It was the most valuable prospects um, three or four, whichever one it was. How many they've done now? But anyway. It was quality, man. They're doing quality stuff. And we've spoke very highly of them in Central Florida, and they've continued to deliver in Central Florida. There you go. There you go. So Weekend Trav, then I will toss it to you for a final thought to episode 165 of Weighing In with Travis Hartman. Final thought to you, Weekend Trav. I know inflation is a little bit high, guys. But if you have the eighty nine ninety five to spend, I think you could throw it at this Canelo Alvarez fight that is in Las Vegas, that is on pay-per-view. I think you will enjoy it and you'll get your money's worth based on how many fights that are quality that you'll get to see. Like uh, B Money said, I think if you tune in from the very beginning, eight or nine o'clock, I think you're going to be satisfied eight. by the time it gets to Canelo. I'm pretty sure it's eight. That's what I- It's saw. probably eight or nine Eastern Standard Time. Prime pay-per-view begins at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So Yeah, so they'll um, probably show them more fights. Yeah, so whatever undercard that we don't have access to or or maybe we just don't want to look it up, there's other fights going on too, but those are the main ones, and those, the main ones are pretty good. Uh, so check them out. Uh, we can Trav. I uh, appreciate your time as always. Uh, if you have yet to subscribe to our content, I know it's been a little sparse recently. We can Trav has been lifting up, the, doing the heavy lifting with interviews, and, and this is the first time we've met virtually uh, for yeah. an episode in almost a month. It's been it's true. it's been it's like true. 28 days. What's up with that? That's on me. It's been um the longest 28 days of my but life. But I but I will say we're back. And on top of that, we can Trav, I know you're excited uh, cuz this is my final thought because in just over 2 weeks we are going to be where we're going to be in God's Green country. Bay. God's country. Green Bay, Wisconsin, watching my Green Bay Packers and whoever their quarterback is of the moment, taking <laughs> on the Minnesota Vikings, who also won this weekend. We're the only team in our division that lost. Um, but it's going to be a great time because not only that, but we have a Brewers game. We might have something going on Friday if we if we can get in on some other fight action going on Friday in Milwaukee. Our boy Alex, Alex Nicholson. Let's go. We, we definitely might. want to come support. I think we're going to be there on Friday, the 20, whatever that is in Milwaukee. 27th or 20, the 27th. The 27th. 
September yeah, 27th buddy. in Milwaukee, Alex Nicholson fighting. And then obviously we'll get some baseball. We'll get some football. We'll get some Oktoberfest. We got a lot going on. We can travel. And I, my energy is just pumped. What do you think about that, Trump? Yeah, what do you think, buddy. What do you think about that? You're about I'm to hear excited. him tonight in about an hour as well, oh, buddy. Oh, boy. Okay. So <laughs> with that, I'm going to close it here. Episode 165. Subscribe below. Hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when we drop new content. Follow us not only on YouTube, but also our audio. Everywhere you get your podcasts at, if you're driving a smooth Tesla like I am, it's on TuneIn Radio there on your in your in your ride. You can get it on Spotify. You can get it everywhere else, too. But that over there is the talent weekend trap. That there is B-Money, a.k.a. producer, a.k.a. the man, the myth, the legend, the man that helps this podcast go round. God bless. Bless.